Hi everybody, my name is Antje and today I'll be talking about one of my all-time favorite books, Northern Lights by Philip Pullman. And this is a young adult book that takes place in a universe parallel to ours. And to be exact, in Oxford, in Northern Lights, we are following a girl called Lyra who is about 12 or 13 years old and who lives in a college because she is an orphan. And she mostly just runs wild and does what she feels like. And from time to time, her uncle, Lord Asriel, who is an explorer, comes by the college and looks in on her. And she fears him and respects him at the same time and is especially interested in his newest project, where he's studying the Northern Lights. The story really starts when her best friend Roger goes missing and Lyra goes off on a journey to go and save him. On the way, she also meets up with armored bears, witches and all kinds of other things that we don't have in our world. As I said, um, Northern Lights takes place in a universe that's parallel to ours. There are these small differences, so as I said, armored bears and witches, and then they have different technology from ours, so they don't have electricity, but something called enbaric lights, and they don't have airplanes and travel with zeppelins instead. Another difference is the politics, so the church is very powerful, and there have been certain things that differ from their history than from ours. So for example, the capital of a church isn't in Rome, but in Geneva. But the biggest difference in this universe is that every human has a demon, and this demon is in the form of an animal. In the case of adults, the animal has a fixed form, but for children, the demons can still switch their forms at will, so they can be a fox one minute and a rabbit the next. It's kind of unclear what demons are exactly. I think the best way of describing them is that they embody the soul of a person, so they feel the same emotions and their character traits are very similar to those of their human. But at the same time, they have their own free will and they can't read the um, thoughts of the human. So in Lyra's case, her demon is called Pantalaemon, and she has a lot of discussions with him, which is how we get to know her thoughts, her feelings, and just general her personality as a whole. So why do I love this book so much? Well, on the one hand, there's the plot. I really love the adventure plot, just this mystery of why are these children being taken away, what's happening with them. But there are so many more layers to this plot. So you have a lot of political intrigue, then there is a commentary on religion and power. And with every time I open up this book again, I find new nuances and things that I just wasn't aware of the last time I read it. What can really make or break a book is pacing. And I think in Northern Lights, pacing is down to a T. So there is absolutely no scene you could take and scratch out of the book without the entire book falling apart. Everything has its meaning and just drives along this quest that Lyra is on. And that is something I really appreciate. Something that I wasn't aware of for a long time, what really helped me enjoy the story is Philip Pullman's language. And his language is very concise and down to the point. He doesn't use a lot of adjectives. He doesn't go off on tangents. His sentences are mostly two to three um, lines long and that's it. And that also helps with the pacing a lot. You don't get caught up with single sentences or with paragraphs that you have to keep returning to. Instead of that, his sentences are in the same pace as the rest of the story is. And that just rounds off the entire book. And still this language conveys all the information it needs to convey. And I'm just going to read a passage to you right now where I think you really see what this high paced language means. And in any case, there was something else to think about. A rumor had been filtering through the streets for some weeks. A rumor that made some people laugh and others grow silent, as some people scoff at ghosts and others fear them. For no reason that anyone could imagine, children were beginning to disappear. So no book is perfect, even though I think Northern Lights is close to perfection. I am aware that there are two or three things that make it less than perfect. And one of these things is Lyra's character. She isn't really likable in the beginning. And I have to say, I didn't realize this the first two or three times I read the book. But the older I get, the more unlikable she gets. She's just very bratty and ungrateful and superficial. This does get better throughout 
the story but it's just something you have to be aware of it in the beginning she's going to frustrate you a lot and I don't know it might actually be a reason that turns some people off from this book but I think there's a great development arc in her case and a main character doesn't always have to be likable. So Northern Lights also uses the trope of a child running around freely without any adults really taking care of her. So um, that is normal for many fantasy novels, I think, when the child is so young because otherwise there wouldn't be a plot. But I think in Northern Lights you have this imbalance between at times the adults really are adults and see Lyra as a child and at other times they just seem to forget that she's a child and that they were just responsible a page ago. So there's a certain, well it doesn't quite make sense for me and it throws off the entire adult child dynamic throughout the book multiple times. The last negative point I want to mention is not something that pertains to Northern Lights in particular but to their entire trilogy. So I love Northern Lights with all my heart. I know this is going to be a book I'll reread soon but the second and third book in this trilogy are just a hot mess. The second book is still okay-ish, it's a bit weird, the atmosphere is a lot darker and um, the things that happen are creepy and unnerving and that's fine it's just a different tone but the third book is just crazy it's all over the place the plot doesn't make any sense anymore and when you close the third book you just feel weird and kind of unhappy that you just didn't stop after northern lights and said this is it but that's not northern lights fault it's just something you should be aware of if you pick it up that you might just want to stop reading after the first book and pretend it's a standalone. Anyways, that was it for now. I could talk about this book for hours and hours. I hope this video doesn't get too long. Thank you so much for staying until the end. Let me know down in the comments, have you read Northern Lights so far? And if so, did you enjoy it? Maybe you, you have criticism that I didn't mention. I'm always very interested in talking to other people about this book and hear their opinion. But I'll stop here. I would really appreciate a like and I'll see you next time. Bye.